Box Free with Stephanie. Today I want to show you how to make some basic foods with simple ingredients from scratch. And I hope you discover cooking box free is fast and delicious. So let's cook together. Um, today we're going to make baked apple, I mean baked apple fritters um, because it's fall and apples are in season and apple fritters are delicious. So uh, we're going to make baked apple fritters so that they're just a little bit healthier than fried apple fritters from the real bakery style. So we are going to start with our dry ingredients. Um, we need two cups of flour in our bowl and I'm just about out with my flour bag. It's just a tiny bit shy so I'm going to add just another teeny tiny scoop. Okay, so two cups of flour half a cup of um, brown sugar, and we'll add that, and packed brown sugar pretty much. I don't usually like pack mine super tight, I just kind of push it down in there so I know it's got to um, condense it down a little bit. Okay, then we need one tablespoon of baking powder. This is very much like a um, scone recipe. Um, except it doesn't have any eggs, which is kind of cool. Um, I just realized that. I was thinking I needed to get an egg out, but I don't. Okay, so one tablespoon of baking powder, and then we need one teaspoon of salt. Wow, I'm actually measuring my salt, you guys. I never do that. Must have forgot for a minute. That's just hilarious. I never really measure salt. I measure other spices, but um, not that. Okay, so that is one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of cinnamon. Oops, I know what I needed, my butter. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna mix this up to make sure my brown sugar is all blended into my flour. I don't want um, chunks of brown sugar once I'm gonna cut in my cold butter, but I suppose, whoopsie, wouldn't really matter because my mixing my butter would combine it all. Um, okay, and then we're gonna do half a cup, which is one stick of nice cold butter. And this is why I say it's very much like a scone recipe. And I'm just gonna actually chop this up really quick. Um, I have discovered that when you are cutting in cold butter, you can like throw this whole thing in, um, but it just really does make it a little bit nicer and easier um, if you chop it up like that. So we're gonna just do that really quick. Okay, and then I need my pastry blender. So then you just kind of have to push this down into your flour and you want the cold butter because that will help your um, fritters kind of bake up a little more special than if you have like melted butter or warm butter. You want the little butter pieces kind of into your flour. So this is just a little bit of a um, slow process, but you do want it to be you want all the butter chunks to be kind of like the size of a pea maybe, or like your pinky. Um, so you just kind of go until you can't see any more butter that's like the size of your thumb or something. Um, and again, this is just the first step. We're going to add some liquid to it anyway, so it's okay. But we're going to do it like that. Call that good. Get all these butter chunks off of here because we don't want to lose all that good stuff. Gosh, there's a lot of them in there today. Okay, so that is my dry ingredients. So that's really fast. Okay, then what's gonna take a little time is chopping my apples. Um, I need one and a half cups of apples. And um, it says fine apples. So um, I just chop them up on my cutting board. I guess you could put them through a food processor or something, I wonder. I suppose you could. Whoopsie, this thing isn't coming out very nice. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, I gotta wipe my hands off. Okay, so what I do is put it through my little apple corer like that, and then I just flip this over, and then I just chop it. Um, I just kind of don't do it like ultra fine because in this recipe it doesn't really seem to matter. These things all get baked up, but you really don't want huge chunks. So you want to try to go as thin and as little as possible. Um, 
there's my oven telling me it's at 400 so you got to preheat 400 for this one and I used to peel my apples for this recipe then one day I was like in a hurry and I just didn't have time to peel and so um, I didn't and because they're so finely chopped you can't even tell so um, now I don't peel them <laughs> so if you want to you can um, I think it adds a little bit of color which is nice so all right that's basically a hefty one cup if I squish it down we'll call that one cup and then I need one and a half cups so I'm actually going to do another um, another apple but I'll probably only chop up half because I'll just put this in the fridge later and have half an apple later all right so here's my half an apple whoopsie I gotta try to save um, let me get a little dish okay so I'll put this in here and the core I don't need all right so this recipe is something you can make in the morning um, it doesn't necessarily bake very long so um, fresh warm apple fritters are delicious in the morning um, so now I think because I didn't chop up, up anymore I'm gonna chop this one up I kind of forgot I was too busy talking about peelings <laughs> so um, I'm gonna dice my half a cup up nice and small and then I'll have some nice little pieces and some bigger pieces okay and we maybe have plenty one and a half cups plenty of apple but that should not really affect our recipe so um, so there that's pretty close to half a cup so I am following the recipe so that's good okay then we are where that apple go hmm okay so we are going to um, stir these in to kind of get them coated with the flour mix them in a little bit and then we're going to add our milk oh and then before I add the milk I think I want to butter my pan I always like to prep my pan before I add my wet ingredients to my baking stuff so I'm gonna get this over here and so you want a, a nicely greased pan um, because you're making baked fritters and you know there's not necessarily a whole lot of grease in them and you don't want them to stick to your pan so I use butter on certain things sometimes I use a spray but I don't know I like the old-fashioned brush old butter okay so we're gonna call that good all right so now I have added my mm, apples <laughs> now I'm gonna add my milk okay so here I have my cute little pouring thing, my creamer. Uh, I mean cream, what is this thing called? Cream, what's that called? I don't even know, cream pan. We're just gonna pour it in. Oh my gosh. Okay, in this thing, whatever it's called, um, I had pre-measured three quarters cup of milk. So that's all that I poured in there was three quarter cup. And then this is it. This is all you do for your actual fritters. I mean, as far as this part, then we do have one more fun part when they get done baking to kind of put a nice glaze on them, try to crystallize it a little bit. But that's why I feel like this recipe comes together so quickly. Even though you have to chop your apples, kind of prep those up right on the spot, this just comes together so fast. And then you just like drop them on. You don't have to um, get all fancy. So this mixes up really nicely, kind of like a thick muffin mix or almost like a quick bread. Um, these do almost taste like obviously a baked good, but you know, like a muffiny type of um, scone type of biscuit thing. So that was really fast. Doesn't take very much time and it's all really basic ingredients. So now what we're gonna do is drop these onto our pan and you can kind of make these as big or as little as you want so I tend to like them a little bit big so I only get usually like six or seven maybe eight um, I guess I don't really measure these I just glob it on there but like if you wanted to make littler ones um, you could and then you'd have of course more of them and if you had littler people eating in your house or whatever um, maybe they can't eat such a gigantic fritter or maybe you just don't want such big ones so 
you just really drop it on, kind of like drop biscuits. Um, I've never taken the time to kind of shape these and make them pretty um, because you just don't need to. And uh, the dough is a little bit sticky, like I'm not really sure if it would hold all that well. So I just figure it's not worth it, I guess. Um, but if anybody does that, let me know how it works out and like if it stays nicely shaped or anything. Um, so I gotta just grab my scrappers here out of my bowl and my pan is like maxed out, which I guess is okay. Um, I like to have some space in my baking stuff, but I'm gonna add a little bit more there a little bit more here. Okay, and then I'm gonna actually just like scooch these down because this is getting a little crowded on this end of the pan. And this one is not mixed in well, my flour. I got a little bit of flour there, um, which should bake up just fine, but it's kind of like creating this little seam, not letting my batter all stick together, but it's fine. Okay, so these are very rustic looking. You could say, you could call them your rustic baked apple fritters. That's what you could do. Just do it that way. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> Can't get that little bitty glob off. Okay, so um, I guess I'm happy with that. I don't like the looks of this one, but this is my one with the flower, so I'm just gonna do that. These have a bunch of apples sticking out, which might look really nice. Um, and then that's it. Okay, so with my messy hands, I'm gonna pop these in the oven. Okay, so we're gonna bake those for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna come back and add a beautiful glaze and then put them under the broiler. So I'll be back in about 15 minutes. Okay, we are back. It's been about 13 minutes. My house smells delicious. Um, I can't wait for these things to get done. But in just a couple minutes here, I'm gonna to need to um, put my glaze on. So for that, you are going to make a little mixture of one cup of um, powdered sugar. Boy, maybe this bowl is not big enough. Hmm, could get a little tricky. We'll see how I do. Um, and then I'm gonna start with two tablespoons of milk because I don't want it to get too super watery, but um, I usually do three tablespoons, but um, that gets really watery. So I'm gonna try this, see how this is mixing up. So even this is very soupy. Um, but this is really just a glaze um, that you put on your fritters and you know they only have half a cup of sugar in them so they're not like a really sweet um, baked item which is usually very nice um, so by my point is by adding a cup of brown sugar into the top of them and glazing that um, it's really nice it's not overly sweet at all um, so still very good so you're just looking for a little mixture that is kind of runny like this. I'm not gonna do my third tablespoon of milk because um, I think I'm gonna be happy with that. But I do want to look, my timer's just about to go off and I set the timer for 15 minutes. Um, okay, and they are not ready. So I need to give them, I think I'm gonna do three more minutes. Okay, so this can just sit here and, um, and we'll, come back in three minutes. Um, okay, so I was gonna tell you guys this thing that I call the creamer, and then I was like, is it a creamer? It was bugging me, so while my um, apple fritters were baking, I looked it up, and it is a creamer. So like, I say things, then I second guess myself and think I'm going crazy, but it is a creamer. So um, I put more milk in my creamer so that I can add it to my powdered sugar. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you guys if you ever need to use your creamer for your tea set, Maybe you know what it is, but um, that really is what it's called. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back and ready to take our baked apple fritters out of the oven. It's a really hot oven, 400 degrees. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, now what you do is turn off your oven, turn on your broiler. Um, I'm gonna turn mine to low uh, just because I I don't know, I like to be able to control my glazing a little bit more. Um, so while these are really hot and your broiler is getting nice and prepped up, you take your um, glaze and you just paint these on here. 
and it kind of runs off and gets on the pan and that's okay. These are all very rustic and yummy. Oh, and I was going to say, um, mine ended up baking like 21 minutes, partly because they're so big and I think partly because they're jammed on here. There's not a lot of air space, you know, between all my apple fritters on this pan. So if you made smaller ones or you had a bigger pan or just a pan that um, wasn't quite so jam-packed, you might be closer to 15 or 16 minutes. You just bake them until they're done, um, until they're a little bit brown on the top and then they feel solid. And then this, you just divvy up um, to all of them as much as you can. So you can see how much is already on my pan and that's okay. That's just the way it goes. Um, it doesn't it doesn't matter. There's enough on the top here. So we are going to throw these back in. Oh, mm, just got a little sugar on there. Throw these back in and then basically just watch them until it's all nicely crystallized. So I'm going to close my oven door. Um, I feel like I grew up thinking that you like physically could not close the oven door when the broiler was on because it would get like so hot in your oven it would burn your house down or something. And I'm not sure why I think that, but um, lately I've been closing the door when the broiler is on and like nothing explodes. It all works out. So um, I'm going to close this to kind of keep all that heat in. And then what you're waiting for is maybe two or three minutes um, for all that sugar to bubble and truly like crystallize and kind of start to burn. Um, but of course you don't want it to burn. So that's why I put it on a low broiler. And I think if you're impatient or you didn't want to wait, you could probably do a high broiler temperature. Or if your oven just has one broiler, then that's all you get. Um, but yeah, this is, I'm gonna actually switch mine to high. <laughs> so there we go. I'm changing it up because I'm becoming impatient now. I don't really want to wait that long. So um, once these caramelize and get nice and kind of brown, you don't necessarily see it because the fritter itself is brown. Um, so you just have to watch it, but then they are done and then you can let them cool and then you can serve them. So um, this is a really nice thing to make in the morning because in about 10 minutes after baking, the house starts to just smell like cinnamon and apples and baked goods. So it really is like a yummy way to wake up. So um, I'm gonna take a look now, see with my high broiler. So all my sugar on my pan is kind of bubbling up just like it was on, on here, but my fritters are still um, not getting caramelized. So, okay, now my sugar on my fritters are like starting to bubble up and that's when you know it's getting nice and hot um, and cooking that sugar. So the sugar was bubbling up on my pan because the pan was so hot and now it's doing that on my fritters and that's what I want. Okay, I wish I could like zoom in and show you guys, but you'll have to just wait till they come out here and then I'll show you what they look like. Um, and then I think there's gonna be way too hot to eat. So I'm probably not gonna take a sample because 400 degrees, the, the, the oven and then the hot broiler. So um, I think we'll just wait. And I've made these before many times and I know they're absolutely delicious. So, okay, so I'm gonna change my recipe and say definitely go with the high broiler because the low broiler I think would have just taking too long. Um, when these like smell good, you just want to eat them and you don't want to wait five minutes for no reason. And I don't really think there is a reason. So I'm going to say turn your broiler on high and then wait your two to four minutes and then enjoy. Oh, okay. So now my um, sugar is getting brown and I'm just going to wait a second longer because I want kind of the whole fritter to be brown and crystallized with that sugar. And I think you'll see it when I pull it out. Okay, another 10 seconds or so. All right, so um, baked apple fritters are something I started making because I love apple fritters from the bakery and I just don't get to the bakery often or don't go. And um, I saw a recipe for baked apple fritters and I was like, oh, that's right up my alley. I love to bake. And then apple fritters on top of it. And then I've never really done a caramelized glaze like this. So that was really cool. So um, 
which is kind of a fun recipe to do. Okay, I think I'm gonna pull these out. Yes. Okay, so that's what they look like. Oh, it's just really hot. Okay, so you can see where, like here, they're really brown, um, but of course on the edge where my broiler isn't like a direct hit, it's not as brown, but that's what you're going for. You want, um, you want this kind of brown caramelized look on your fritter, and then that's going to give you this nice um, caramelized taste when you go to eat it. So I'm gonna just let those sit for a second because they're really hot, and I'm not even gonna put them on my cooling rack yet. We're just gonna wrap it up and say, this is it. So thank you very much for watching Box Free with Stephanie. I hope you like the show. I hope you make baked apple fritters and your family thinks they're delicious. And again, make them any size you want. I make kind of monster ones, but you can make them any size you want and they do store just fine. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks. <laughs>